Well, you guys, today we're taking a look at how to boost your Wi Fi speed with TP Link. Now, this is the TP Link Archer AX73. This is an AX5400. It's a dual band six stream uh, gigabit Wi Fi six router. Now, this is a pretty decent router if you want to extend your Wi Fi range around your home. It does support WPA3, Home Shield, and also speeds of Wi Fi up to 5400 Mbps. Now we've got an extensive coverage with six high performance antennas on here and we can connect more devices using OFDMA and also MU MIMO on this one. So it's a powerful processor with 1.5 gigahertz triple core processor inside this little unit here and it will run super cool and quiet because obviously the way they've designed it. So why would you need a router just like this one? Well, if your Wi-Fi signal around your home is pretty poor, then this can help you get the most out of your Wi-Fi around your home. You can connect numerous devices to this. It's backwards compatible, smart power saving, and it has a gigabit Wi-Fi, which supports 8K streaming. We do have a USB port for media sharing on here. We have quality control service on here, network protection, and a bunch of other features on here, which is going to be very useful and keep your network nice and secure. We have parent control on here as well. If you've got young children, this is exactly what you're going to get inside the box. You're going to get the router and also your Ethernet cable. I'll show you how to set it up. It's super easy. And uh, all you need to do here, if you've got an ISP router, which uh, you get from your ISP, they're not that great. And I'm on Virgin Media and the router there is not the best for Wi-Fi signal around your home. I'll show you how to set this up. It's really simple. In the UK, you get this barrel connector with a free pin plug on it. If you're living in another country, you'll probably have a different connector on here. It does have this breathable material here that allows airflow to get through to the actual router itself. You do have these six antennas here, which are directional, which means you can direct these to get better signal around your home if you're finding you have a dead spot. On the back, you can see we do have a wall mounted area here. If you want to mount it flush to the wall and have the antennas facing straight up and it does have that breathable material on here as well to keep the unit nice and cool on the bottom as well. Anti-slip rubber feet on here and on this side here, you can see it does look pretty sleek and for £90 in the UK, this is pretty affordable. So let me just pull these antennas up here. Uh, and this is if you wanted it lying flat here. You can still mount it to the wall and have the antennas facing out if you want to. But depending on how you want them, you can set this up exactly how you like to utilize all of the signal strength on the router itself. On the front of the router, we do have our LED lighting. And uh, you can see here, you can turn this off if you want to. But this just lets you know what's going on on the router so you can have an idea of what you've got connected and uh, what is happening to the router at any time. On the side here, we don't have anything on this side. And on the other side, we do have that USB 3.0 port, which means you've got USB sharing on here as well, which is very useful. A lot of ISP routers don't even give you a USB port, so you can't use them. Some do, but most don't. So that is quite useful for sharing and plugging in hard drives for data that you might want to share across the network. On the back, we do have that LED light to turn it off. We have our WPS, which I will be disabling our Wi-Fi, and also our reset button on here. We do have four gigabit Ethernet LAN ports on here on the back, and we also have that WAN port, which is going to go straight to our modem. So I'm going to turn the old, uh, the old router that we've got from our ISP into modem mode. We have our power button and our power input right here. Now, a lot of the time, people are paying for a really fast broadband service, but they're not getting the most out of their Wi-Fi around their home. And that's because the router is not good enough at distributing and sharing that Wi-Fi signal around the home because it gets blocked. So what we're going to do is use this instead of the ISP router. And then we're going to connect up some um, access points on here to get maximum Wi-Fi connectivity around our home. This is just going to plug straight into our modem which is our old router, and I'll show you how to disable the router and make it into a modem on Virgin Media at least. Some uh, routers have what we call a bridge mode uh, instead of modem, uh, but this one has modem. But if yours has bridge mode, you need to put it into that. So I'm going to log into the actual menu of Virgin Media router here. Yours might be the default username and password on the bottom of the router. If you've changed it, it will be whatever you've changed it to. So I'm going to quickly log in here. And once we get inside here, what I'm going to do here is quickly go into 
uh, the option that says modem mode and we're going to quickly change this and uh, change it to modem mode here. Now before the comments section lights up saying you can't boost your Wi-Fi speed, you can utilize the Wi-Fi speed that you're paying for with your ISP with a decent router and some access points. And I'll show you how to utilize the speed of your Wi-Fi by using this method. So if you're finding you're getting super slow Wi-Fi speeds around your home, it's because your Wi-Fi router is not good enough at sending a signal around your home and you're going to need a better router. And this is the reason why you're not getting the maximum speed of Wi-Fi connectivity around your home on your devices. You might have dead spots and this is going to alleviate a lot of this. So what we're going to do is quickly put this into modem mode and apply this. Then the IP will change on here because it's given us an IP for the modem now. You will lose internet connectivity at this point around your home because now we've disabled our router and it's now gone into a different color mode here, which is red. And this is going to be our modem. I've already reset this. So you need to shut this down and reset it. And I'll show you doing that later on. But basically the light will change color here because we've put it in modem mode. So this is what we're looking at now. I've pulled all of the Ethernet cables out. I've just got my cable going into the back and the power is on. And I need to now put in the Ethernet cable into one of these ports here. I'm going to go into port one here. And this is going to now act as a modem instead of a router. So all of the Wi-Fi on this will stop and all the connectivity will stop. All we're using it for is a modem instead of a router. And we're going to be using our TP-Link uh, router for all of our connectivity now. So let me go ahead and set this up and we'll get this plugged in and then we can then get this uh, tested. So all I need to do here is just plug this in here and then we're going to put this onto the shelf and uh, set up the other one. So we should have a simple setup like this now. Very simple and easy to do as I've already said. So let's go ahead and put this back on the shelf and I'll show you exactly what it's going to look like now we've got it all plugged in. So up here you can now see that I've turned this off and I've turned the power off to this now because you need to reset this because we've plugged the router into this now and we want to recalibrate the whole thing. So I'm going to turn the power off onto uh, the actual router itself and empower it back on. You'll see the lights flash. Make sure you reset the router as well, which is your TP-Link router, and you'll see it start to populate and you'll have a bunch of lights changing on the front of the router here. Now, don't worry if you have an orange light here. That's because we don't have it all set up on the TP link here now. So go into your user manual of the TP link and create an account for your router itself. It will give you the IP in there, connect up to it. And then all you need to do here now is create a strong password to access your router menu. This is important. Don't leave this as a weak password because people will be able to access your router which is something you don't want to do so i'm going to give this a nice strong password here and uh, make sure you keep this uh, secret you don't want anyone getting hold of it and once we've done this we can move on to the next step so going next and all you need to do here now is give yourself a time zone depending where you are around the world you would just give it the correct time zone click next i'm setting up a dynamic ip address because that's what i'm on with Virgin Media, but if you're on a different one here or you want to set up a static IP address, you can do. If you're with BT or Sky or any of those, and maybe you're on something different in the States, you'd need to change this to your own needs. Next up, you can choose a MAC address for your router. You can either use the one that comes with the router or use one of your own choice. The wireless settings here, I'm going to leave as is right now. And we're going to go ahead and give ourselves a new network password and also a new uh, network SSID. And this is important. This is going to be recognizable for yourself. I've blurred mine out, but basically give yourself a network name, SSID and a password and move on to the next step. Now, I've blurred out my MAC address here, but you can see we don't have any mesh devices connected to the network right now. And I will connect one of these just to show you. This is just the router connected around my home. And I'm in one of the spots in my home where I'm getting 42 or 41 down and we're getting a reasonable upload speed here. But I can make this better with an access point added to uh, the TP-Link router. And we'll call this a mesh device here. We've got one of them. I'm going to attach two here, but at the moment I've only connected one 
and I'll show you the speed difference once we add this to our network. So I'm going to click on this here and you'll see which one I've used here. It's just the RE450, which I had lying around. And I'm going to use this and connect to this to my network and see what sort of speeds we get when we have this connected as an access point or a one mesh uh, device connected to our network. So let me go ahead and I'll show you some of the speeds you can get when you have this access point added. And we'll go back to the same location and I'll run that speed test one more time here. And as you can see, the speed difference is massive. This is now utilizing all of my Wi-Fi speeds, what I'm paying for with my ISP. As long as you buy the right hardware for the right speed that you're paying for with your ISP, you should improve the Wi-Fi speeds around your home and have better Wi-Fi connectivity for all your devices and better download speeds for your devices. You're not going to boost the speed beyond what you're paying for, but you're just going to utilize that speed a lot better with this hardware. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.